Excuse me, log. Hi, oh, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day. You're in paradise in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this glorious Sunday afternoon in literally the middle of July, the middle day, what I consider the middle day of the summer of 2023, where I think it is 79 degrees here at 5 o'clock in the afternoon at, uh, at Bugs in a Jar Farm. So we're taking advantage of this nice cool beautiful day before the smoke blows in tomorrow enjoying our last day before the smoke returns with the uh, gas sucking lawnmower so the little dog and i we're going to take a break <clears throat> from the gas sucking lawnmower to bring you today's chronicle of the collapse and guys i have uh <clears throat> already read several of I'm not even sure it's a man. I, I, I'm thinking this person, this mysterious, enigmatic person named B. He, maybe she, just with the letter B writing on medium. Uh, I, I mean, whoever this person is, is uh, does, we're, we're just going to assume it's a guy, uh, does his homework and uh, once again uh, if, if you are not a follower of B on medium.com and you are interested in what's going on on this planet uh, I would put B and Alan Urban and Corrine Nita uh, at the top of my list uh, you know Umer can take care of himself but uh, anyway, we're going to hear from, I assume, Brother B today from Medium.com from a couple of days ago while I was uh, trying to save myself from being buried in a mudslide at a bluegrass festival. This is what uh, B was... Uh, had on his mind with this new essay, How Not to Save the World. <clears throat> Take it away, B. Writing a series of posts about the crux of the energy transition does come with a serious dose of cognitive dissonance. On the one hand, I have a burning sensation to write about my findings I came across researching the topic, yet, on the other hand, who am I to pour cold water on people's green enthusiasm and perhaps their only uh, their only uh, uh, their only hope in a livable future? What am I doing here? Mm, let's be clear right up front. I earn nothing from writing about this topic. I have nothing to do with the fossil fuels industry or banks either. I am doing this as a hobby, dedicating to 20 to 40 hours a week to it, doing research, keeping up with the top news and blogs related to the topic. I am an engineer by profession and a generalist with a wide range of interests from biology to history psychology, physics, and economics. I am also someone who has gotten really fed up with the amount of magical thinking sold to him. I am a realist with a capital R. I am a realist with a severe bullshit allergy. My blog, The Honest Sorcerer, thus serves as an outlet valve, all I'm doing here is releasing some of the pressure from my brain. What you can read here is my personal conclusion on the trajectory of this civilization. 
I want to say these things out loud, and perhaps I'm not alone. You might have similar feelings, and there is nothing wrong with that. Something is really amiss with this society. With that said, I'm inventing nothing new here. I am collecting and retelling stories that were written by much smarter people than me. All I am writing about can be researched on the internet. Feel free to Google any statement I have made. In fact, I encourage you to do your own research. On the other hand, I am also a human being, and I am afraid, I mean really afraid, to see people willfully deluding themselves, regardless of faith, religion, political stance, hierarchical or social status, all sides. I see people wearing blinders in each group. Fossil fuel addicts, tried to deny, then downplay climate change for years, now they play a delay and fail game with non-existent, unscalable, uneconomic solutions, carbon capture and storage, green growth people, green growth people place all their, uh, place all their uh, uh, hopes, empowering a fossil fuel-based economy on intermittent, diffuse, and resource-intensive renewables. But there is one thing in common. Both groups happily forget the scientific fact that mineral resources, be it oil or metals, are finite and are already well into the process of economic depletion. We live in a rapidly deteriorating world. And what are we doing about it? Ask each other, what gives you, huh? what gives you, huh? what gives you hope? As if this word, you know, the H word, would mean anything. As if it could put an end to a series of uncomfortable thoughts. No, reality does not give the slightest shit. What gives us hope. There you go. Uh, this will have to be the headline of this one. Reality doesn't give the slightest shit what gives you hope. There you go. The earth system and the human ecosystem in it is much more complex than any one of us could imagine. Let alone steer it one way or another. All we can do is play our role in this grand theater play. Yet, it remains the prevailing myth of our time that we can change the world if we so wish. Hmm. All we need is her. Huh. All we need, all we need is her, huh, her, huh, her huh, hope and faith and faith in technology to tackle climate change, to end poverty, to bring well-being and abundance to all people in the world. We have the technology, it's called uh, vasectomy and tubal ligation. Anyway, our civilization was founded on a myth a belief, a belief in human agency, a belief that humanity is still in its infancy, a belief in eternal human progress and growth while disregarding physical 
realities. As Alan Watts wrote, though, quote, all belief is fervent. Uh, is fervent. Uh, all belief is fervent. Uh, 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 hope. And thus a cover-up for doubt and uncertainty, close quote. And the future is rife with uncertainty. There are so many moving parts. Who could tell what is going to happen exactly and when? I can't. All I have is a rough feeling of where we are going and a certain sense of where we are not. I came to conclude in recent years that the world is about to experience radical change. Call it simplification. It's not going to be a single event though, rather a long process lasting many decades to come, something which will bottom out in a century or so. But it is already underway. I cannot help but notice this. This is how collapse looks from the inside. As the uh, smoke from the Canadian wildfires looms uh, in the western horizon, this is how collapse looks from the inside. Politicians, pundits, and CEOs try to sell us that it's not happening. That is just a bump on the road. Everything will be fine. We will tackle and fight climate change. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. blah. We have the tools. All we need is the will. If you are 100% sure about this, perhaps my blog, and I would add Collapse Chronicles, is not for you. If you, on the other hand, have at least a tiny hunch that something is amiss with this grand narrative, then I encourage you to keep on reading. I won't be able to give you, <laughs> I will not, be able to give you ha uh, give you ha uh, 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 uh. however that is not one of my strengths all i am offering is a narrative on where we might be heading and most importantly why comparing our situation to the titanic is all too common. Well, it's beyond common. It's cliche these days. How we hit or may hit that iceberg and how we're shuffling chairs on the deck. After delving into the topics of soil erosion, mineral resource and aquifer depletion, dying oceans, disappearing insects and other species, thermodynamics, complexity theory, ecology, net energy, limits to growth, economics, diminishing returns, Jevons paradox, pollution, climate chaos, political upheaval, inequality, debt, globalization, disaster capitalism, lack of free will, cultural programming, psychology of denial, shifting baseline as the myth of progress and the, log and the logical fallacy of changing a system from within, I came to see the situation rather differently. Just try and search the internet of your local library for any of these topics I've listed above, and you will soon discover that this civilization is past redemption beyond any, uh, any uh, hope 
of salvation. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, this really, I, I wish to hell when I was on that soft white underbelly uh, interview and, and I had like 40 minutes to sum up 15 years of studying all of this, you know, being a generalist, studying all of this shit for 15 years, and, and I'm supposed to sum up in 15 minutes why I'm a doomer. I, I, I really wish I had had this paragraph right here ending uh, with the sentence. You know, if you spend 15 minutes, you don't have to spend 15 years like I have done and, and like B has done, 15 minutes. You will soon discover that this civilization is past redemption beyond any hope of salvation. Thank you very much, B. This ship did not have enough fuel to reach the other coast in the first place. The air has become fouled by exhaust fumes. People are killing each other. Water was already leaking into the hull at an unsustainable rate well before our ship hit that iceberg. Yes, she has hit it already, and now she is sinking, but she was dropping well before that moment and had zero chance of reaching that other shore anyway. Yet, this is fine. I don't know why he meant to say this. I was a human being, yet this is fine. I was a human being. I will not live forever. This civilization will not either. It will crumble and end up in ruins. Paradoxically, the harder we try to save it, the faster it will go down. There is a saying in ecology, I love this saying, this, you know, I really had to wrap my brain about this, one of the fundamentals of ecology. Okay, follow me here. If something is unsustainable, it will not be sustained. There you go. Principles of ecology, number one, if something is unsustainable, such as this civilization and the population of humans on this planet, it will not be sustained. Something has to give. It's gonna go. It is as simple as that. This is real rocket science. You really don't have to spend 15 years getting a PhD in ecology to understand that if something is unsustainable, it won't be sustained. It is as simple as that. Thank you. B. It will not be the end of the world. However, far from it, it will be a new beginning of something radically different. Ironically, all your, uh, all your, uh, all your uh, uh, hopes of tackling climate change, ending pollution, ending colonialism, and leveling inequality will come true, just not the way most of us imagine it today. First of all, it will not be made by choice for the majority. Some lucky few will be offered an alternative. For the rest of us, these changes will be forced upon us. There will be death and suffering as Indy, I'm assuming he's talking about Indica, uh, wrote, 
recently, quote, the truth is that the gods demand sacrifice. The sooner we make it, the sooner they will be appeased. But humans are lazy and comfortable, and we just won't do it until the last minute. Close quote. If we had listened to the limits of growth study 50 years ago, we might have saved this civilization by reducing consumption by half compared to the 1970 level and by stopping, stopping population growth at where it was when limits to growth came out 50 years ago if we had cut consumption in half and stopped population growth and we were still the same population we were 50 years ago maybe we would have had a chance to save this sinking ship but None of this has happened. Material consumption, you know, over the past 50 years, material consumption has quadrupled and our population has doubled since then. Now, an almost impossible sacrifice is required by comparison. Of course, it would be the right thing to do. But, back to reality, it's not gonna happen. Uh, there you go. It ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. None of this shit is gonna happen. Ding, ding. Ain't gonna happen. Let me see if these beautiful impatience want to act as a wind guard for the microphone. Uh, you, you, you know, every one uh, 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 of these Hopium uh, articles and essays and videos I see, the, the, these people just blabbing on and on and on about all of this shit ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen, guys. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. Incrementalism. You know, little, let's just a little here, a little tweak here, a little tweak there. Incrementalism will not cut it either so late in the game. It will just exacerbate the problem by pushing out the shelf life of the business as usual as possible. Knowing capitalism's relentless drive to save itself from oblivion, this will still take decades. Governments and corporations will be holding on to the status quo as long as resources hold, burning as much oil as they can as they can economically pump out of the ground, then, as the saying goes, every nation and every man for himself. Don't know about the women. This world will not end in a large pop. Instead, it will be a very long slurp, so long that you will think it will never end. Were it not for the immense suffering it will bring, you would say that it's boring. Maybe you won't see the end of it. Not because of your premature demise, but because it will take so long. On the other hand, maybe your grandchildren will see it. Forget saving the world. Forget saving the world. 
it is well past its shelf life and has started to rot. Instead, prepare for uncertainty, learn practical skills, and teach them to your children. Well, if you have children, save and bring along whom you can. Build resiliency, build lifeboats. The ship is sinking and more and more of us will find ourselves in the cold waters. Help people survive, help them preserve their sanity. They will need it. It's going to be a long ride. So obviously I am glad to hear that B is not one of these clueless moron near-term human extinction uh, cult members talking this crap uh, how humans are going to be extinct uh, what by what, what is it now guys three years or is it seven years I can't remember what these clueless morons talking about how humans are going to be extinct now of course I would like to read B's views on nuclear uh, war uh, speeding this process up a little bit. But anyway, I have to wrap this up because I have to get back to my gas-sucking lawnmower. I guess I could drag that planet-saving electric mower out of the garage, but uh, I just love those fossil fuels. So I've got so let's see so i've got a gallon of gas in this hand and about 10 pounds of lithium batteries uh in in, in the other oh god anyway get out there and uh save the world while you still can and if you live in new york baby enjoy these final few hours before the smoke from hell returns more on that tomorrow no doubt bye guys damn it uh trying to do anything <laughs>